brush. If you click on uh, B for brush, that opens up this huge palette of brushes that exist. Uh, sometimes, you know, if your brushes get a little goofy, you can uh, go to reset all brushes. Um, it will erase, though, any, any brushes that you may have made. So if you've made any insert brushes, those things will go away. If you have an insert brush that you've made, you can do a save as, and it'll save it as a, a Z brush preset, basically a ZBP. Um, you can also grab, like I said, there's tons of brushes in here. Uh, I've kind of selected my most commonly used brushes at the bottom. So if you hit one, it's a standard brush. So let me just do a Dynamesh on this thing. Standard brush. If you hit two, uh, for some reason two broke. I gotta fix this in, in this version, but usually I have this mapped to my damn standard brush, which is like a, a little kind of crease brush. So it can give you some really nice shapes. Three, I have mapped to my move brush. Okay. Uh, four is mapped to clay tubes. So what clay tubes does is if you left click and hold, um, it'll create a kind of sculpt at a certain level and then you have to click again to build up. I usually use this for you know musculature, anything that maybe has wrinkles and folds and then you can sort of smooth it back and it leaves a little bit of kind of wrinkling or rippling behind which is like I said really good for uh, muscular areas. Uh, five I have is clay buildup. So it's like clay tubes, the difference is that when you click and hold it builds up really really rapidly. So you see it really builds up fast. So it's actually very very good for um, you know, quick, quick sculpting, and when you're doing that kind of initial pass and trying to get uh, big shapes in. Uh, next up, we have uh, snake hooks. So I showed that a bit earlier. So it's like the move tool, except it can allow curvature through the moves that you make. So you know, it's really good for kind of pulling out horns or maybe hair, depending on the situation. Uh, seven, I have mapped to inflate. So that kind of uh, bulges or thickens things up a bit, right? Um, so that's seven. Uh, eight is, uh, I forget what eight is moved to actually. It looks like it's kind of the move brush again. Um, nine I have mapped to, again I think some of these shortcuts are broken, but uh, by default uh, control, I'll show you this, control click and drag, sorry control shift, you can see control shift left click and drag is a visibility select option okay so that allows you to isolate parts of the model so it's control shift click and drag and it will isolate a particular area so kind of like control if you control shift click off the model uh, it will clear uh, the hidden parts it'll it'll basically display everything if you control shift click over this part and actually control shift then tap on it left click uh, it'll reverse the selection so you can kind of jump back and forth this way so sometimes you know you're working on one leg the legs are very close together near the crotch and you need to work on let's say the inner thighs or something it's a quick way to kind of jump between those two areas so um, one thing I want to talk about though is the, um, the interface here so I've kind of made a smaller version of these buttons uh, in the default interface these buttons are, are about double the size if you click on the standard brush again you can switch brushes here so uh, B is the shortcut which you can use to kind of pop that menu up or you can click on that button. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, if you look at these buttons it's kind of interesting. So you can hit B and they're alphabetical so you can say I want to get to the masking brushes so you can hit M. So M will just isolate the masking brushes and even then you see there's little letters in the upper left corner of each button. You can sometimes remember uh, a series of, of keys, right? So let's say I want the, the mask lasso, so that would be B, M, L, right? And now when I hold control, I get a mask lasso, right? So it's a quick way to get access to those, um, some of those brushes that you may be using a lot. Um, something else I should mention. So let's say on a lot of the standard sculpting brushes, like the standard brush, damn standard, clay tubes, clay buildup. Oftentimes if I do editing on a brush, I start with a standard. So in here you've got the stroke type. So right now this is a, let me just switch to the standard. Uh, standard brush. And if I click and drag, right, we just have the simple brush stroke, right? If you go in, you can switch this to a different stroke type. So there's a drag type. So if I drag it out, let me go with a really high intensity so we can see that. So if I drag it out, it's just pulling out one sample of that stroke. If I go to color spray, I can spray the stroke across that area, right? So I can kind of make something unique very quickly that way. 
And there's little options here so you can spread the placement out further. So it's a little more spread out. Or you can bring them a little tighter in. Right? Something kind of lumpy there. Um, now what's interesting about this, let me go back to, to freehand. So freehand is often the default or maybe dots. It's a little more of a spaced stroke than freehand. So you've got usually a few types of strokes available. If I hold control and click on this, control, which is your masking pen, actually has a few additional options like lasso, curve, or rectangle. So sometimes you get different uh, options depending on the type of brush that you're selecting. So let me go back to freehand. I can now load an alpha as well, and you can make your own alphas, but let's say I want a splotchy brush. Well, if I drag this out, you can see that it'll leave this sort of um, splotchy pattern, right? Which is interesting. So we have lots of ways to use alphas. So it's sort of filtering the stroke through this, uh, like an alpha channel. Um, and what's great about this is that we can actually drag it out as well. So if we want a very specific type of patterning, we can drag it out instead of just brushing it in a continuous line, right? Or if I do the color spray or the spray, uh, the, the, the only difference really between color spray and spray is that color will actually affect any kind of color if you're actually painting color. So if I spread this out, right, I can get some really interesting textured surface work this way, right? So it's immensely powerful uh, when you start sculpting, getting detail work in. So a lot of times these factors come into play, right, using different sort of stroke types, different alphas, uh, come into play when you're doing, again, finer and finer work. Uh, one of the terms uh, a lot of professional uh, modelers will use is high frequency and low frequency detail. So frequency basically means the number of times, right? So low frequency detail would be these very, very large shapes. They only occur uh, twice, right, on the left and right side. So that's low frequency or low number of uh, shapes. And then high frequency stuff would be like little wrinkles and pores. So this kind of finer texture detail is um, high frequency, which you would need high polygon counts to display. Um, this stuff isn't visible if you don't have a high enough resolution mesh, right? So if I dynamesh this down, it sort of goes away, right? So that's a little bit, uh, I guess, about the, the settings of your brushes in terms of painting onto your object or sculpting onto your object. Um, if we actually, actually want to talk about paint, this does kind of relate. So let me uh, reset this to just a, a non-alpha and non-stroke or just a freehand stroke. And I'm going to dynamesh this thing very, very low. Um, so one thing people often get confused about, right, is if I switch materials down here in ZBrush, this material is actually uh, kind of like a preview. So it's not really applied to the mesh. It's just sort of like a placeholder. The same thing with color. So sometimes if you just shift your color around, you see it fills the object automatically with whatever color you're setting, right? So the way to actually paint, or if you want to start texturing anything in ZBrush, I'm going to turn off, um, yeah, let me just make sure I'm on the standard brush. I always like to make sure I paint with standard. And if we focus in here under Z add, Z subtract, I will turn off Z add, and now we've got RGB. So I can actually paint in color, right? You can also paint in material only, or you can combine paint and material. So I'll just show you first with RGB, and I'll come back to the material option. By the way, whenever I paint, I often switch between two main uh, materials, Skin Shade 4. So it, it kind of gives me a nice neutral looking white material and flat color, which is zero shading, zero highlights. So I can really look at the image almost as if I were painting in, inside Photoshop. So there's no kind of 3D lighting and shading applied. So often we'll switch between these two. So I'll leave it on skin shade four. So remember, this is sort of like a temporary kind of just preview color, but if I want to apply it to the surface, I can go to color, fill object. So that now will make it a permanent part of the, the, um, of the mesh. And if I switch colors, you see it doesn't change anymore. So now if I turn on RGB, right, I can go in and start painting color. So, there are some limitations to this. Um, let me see if I can get this uh, resolution down way low. Let me just smooth this out a bit. So, one of the, the issues with this is that ZBrush is, uh, its painting is actually applying color to each and every uh, vertex. So, it's not actually painting in any kind of UVs. Let me just turn off the uh, fill color so we can see that. So, when you paint something, it's actually loading the paint or color information into each vertex. 
right? So when I hit a vertex, that's when it starts displaying color. So it's a bit of a cheat in a way. Um, so uh, oftentimes your resolution, your mesh resolution, so this is only 960, uh, 970 vertices or faces, um, you have to think of them almost like pixels at the same time. So in order to get higher resolution detail in the texture, I have to make sure I'm painting in a high resolution mesh. So let's say, let me undo this a bit. Um, I'll dial this back. And I'm going to up the resolution to, let's say, 150. Control, click, and drag in Dynamesh here. And now we're at 70,000. So watch when I paint now. You know, I can get a much smoother transition. So there's more, right, more of these uh, vertices to paint with. So that might work for flat color. But let's say you want to apply a texture. So if I go to drag, we've got some pre-built textures. So I'm just going to grab some of the stuff that's in here. But you can also go to import and import your own... Um, your own images if you want for textures or maybe something you downloaded or Photoshop. So we'll turn on texture. I'll go to alpha. If I click and drag this out, you can see I'm not really getting a good kind of look at that. It's still kind of grainy and pixelated. So if you ever see texture that looks kind of pixelated, it could be a limitation of resolution, right, of the mesh resolution itself or a limitation of the actual image source, so this image source might be kind of low res, and it's it's not bad. It's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So what I'll do to try to fix this, and by the way, if you smooth as well when you've got uh, texture data, it'll blur your textures as well. So I'm going to uh, up the resolution even higher. I usually like to be at at least a million polys, and I'll explain why in a minute. So if I drag this out now, you'll get a much better view on that uh, on that texture. We can see much more of the detail in it. Um, so like I said, each vertice on the mesh uh, w acts, it holds color information and will act essentially as a kind of um, pixel of sorts. So you guys all know that when you work in textures, you work in resolutions of usually square textures, right? They're 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, right? 2048 by 2048. So there's a little bit of a weird, a weird bit of math that I do on this um, sometimes. So if I'm building a character and I know the output resolution, of the textures is is uh, is 1024 by 1024. Have you guys ever heard of megapixels, right? Maybe on like your cell phone or on a digital camera. A megapixel is literally millions of pixels. So you know, let's say my camera I think does like 4196 by like 3000 pixels. So if I multiply those two numbers together, I get 12.5 million pixels or 12.5 megapixels, right? So if I do 1024 by 1024, I know that's my output texture resolution. My model needs to be at least about that many vertices in poly count, right, or in uh, vertex count to get that resolution quality out. Um, oftentimes I like to be higher than that, so I tend to work on models that are 2 to 4 million polys. And let's say your, your um, texture size is 4096 by 4096. You need a model that maybe is between 15 and 20 million polys to kind of output that quality of texture from ZBrush. Because it's working in a vertex base, not a UV base, um, it's kind of a little rule of thumb that I've, I've picked up along the way. Um, a lot of feature film models, by the way, are actually uh, 15, 20 million polys, and in some cases they can get into like almost 100, 150 million polys. There are ways of sculpting. <laughs> Uh, there's some special modes for that inside ZBrush, but anyways, that's just to sort of talk about that uh, that uh, sort of issue. Another issue you might have when it comes to some of these strokes, if you notice, I'm not getting the full square of the texture out, right? It's kind of just like faded at the edges. That's kind of what focal shift is doing. So if I have a focal shift of 100, I'll get like a tiny, tiny little dot of the texture. It's kind of acting like a... Um, a fall off on the edge of the brush. So you know in Photoshop you've got a softness hardness setting. It's like a zero softness setting. If I go to negative 100 I should get the full square texture. So this also applies to alphas and if you're sculpting, let's say I go back to Z add for the standard brush, right? I'm still in drag. Let me turn off the texture as well. So if I put on an alpha, uh, let me get something that's more mechanical like this arrow, right? If I click and drag and crank the intensity as well. Click and drag, I've got this arrow, right? Sometimes if you ever drag out an alpha and you're like, oh, it's kind of soft at the edges, you see it's kind of fading out at the edges, that's because of the focal shift. By default, it's at zero. 
Um, and if you're dragging on alpha and you don't want that fading at the edges, you can set it to minus 100 and you'll get a nice clean drag out of the alpha. Um, so those are a couple of notes to consider. Uh, one last thing as well, like I said, you can, I don't often do this, but you can paint in areas. So let's say whatever this creature is, uh, if I wanted to have like metallic horns, right? If I go to material now, I can actually paint or apply materials to one part of the mesh. So I turn on M only, not RGB. You can do both at the same time where you paint material and color at the same time. But So let's say I'm on skin shade 4. I'm going to go to M. If you go to color, fill object, just like I did with the, the, the green color, it'll apply that now to the whole object. So when you, you're switching materials, you won't see it switch, right? So if I want to now apply that, let's say, a metallic material to these horns, I have to paint it in. Actually, let me switch back to my freehand stroke and turn off my alpha. But now I can, oops, let's make sure I'm, uh, I'll fill this color again. Undo's, by the way, sometimes can act a little tricky. So when I undid it, it filled the whole object with this metallic material. But now you can see I can kind of paint in this, um, this metallic sort of uh, material here, right? Yeah, basically painting in materials is like painting in a, a separate shader onto a part of the object. Uh, now, if you want to reset, let's say, the material, there's a trick to this as well. You want to actually go to flat color, and then I believe if you go to color fill object, you can now jump back and forth between different materials. It's sort of like a way to reset the material. This also applies to RGB as well. So you can do one only, like you can do material only, you can do RGB only or MRGB. So let's say you're like, well, that was a crappy experiment, right? Turn on MRGB, set your material to white, your little uh, color swatch, set your uh, material to flat color and do a color fill object and it pretty much now resets everything so you kind of get back to default right where you can quickly switch a material uh, quickly sort of set a color uh, on your object for some reason uh, that's not working let me try this with color one more time so flat color set it to 100 percent white color fill object and now again we'll switch between materials oops all right oops let's try it one more time fill object yeah so you know, sometimes like people get a little confused by that when they're starting to paint. Um, yeah. So this this will help you kind of uh, reset your objects here.